live from Maryland football practices. The spring game is on Saturday. This is Wayne Viner and this is Luke Jackson from Pressbox. Boy, it's been an interesting spring as you get to go out and see the practices and it's a beautiful day for football today. Oh, Wendy. But Maryland looks more and more Big Ten ready on the defensive line, the offensive line. I really like what they're doing. What are the changes that you've seen that give you hope for the 2018 season? Well, like we were talking about they definitely added some size on the defensive line with Byron Coward, who is a big guy who was uh, initially at Auburn. Uh, he was there for two years, and he actually played a couple games for Auburn last year b before he ended up transferring, going to community college in Florida. Now he's here. He will be eligible next year, and it looks like those bookend defensive ends are going to be Jesse Annabottom and Coward, and that will be a big upgrade over what they had last year when they actually had uh, I believe Savon Walker at defensive end, uh, and and it's not anything about Savon. He was out of position. Right. He's a defensive tackle, and he was playing defensive and end. And they had freshman uh, Bryce Brand at the other side. Right, right. So. And, and Shane Cockerell at the uh, end of the year, they actually tried him at end. Uh, I don't know how well that worked against Penn State because <laughs> Penn State scored 66 points on Maryland. So really nothing they did defensively last year uh, went very well for them. So they do have some exercise on the de on the defensive line. That should help out, assuming they stay healthy. Right. And then, and I've uh, also seen uh, one of the Gaddies, who wears number 99, right. playing nose tackle. So right. if you put him next to Cowart with Annabonham coming off the end, you really got something. And Adam McClain looks like he's stepping yep. up a bit. We'll hear from him after practice. And as we all know, time is money. That's where our fully managed approach to IT can help. With proactive remote monitoring and management, we're able to keep tabs on your IT infrastructure 24-7, 365 days a year. And when a problem does arise, our technical experts can quickly resolve it, in many cases before you're even aware that there was a problem at all. For an affordable fee, we'll provide the monitoring, technical support, and full problem resolution you need to stay productive. Want to learn more? Drop us a line today to see exactly how we can help keep your systems running smoothly and keep you focused on what matters most, growing your business. Right, and you did mention the Gaddy Twins. I think those, I've been covering the, the team for about two years now. Those are two twins are the biggest guys that I've seen out here in my two years of covering the team and seeing practices and all that. Um, th those kids are massive. They redshirted last year, and they're probably in a little better shape now, having been in the program for a full year. Looking forward to see what they do. On the quarterback side, you get to see Piggy and Kasim Hill run around and do some lunges and stretches, but they're not really playing football. So on Saturday, you're going to see a Bortenschlager quarterback. You might see a little bit of Tyler Dessou, who looks pretty good for a kid that could he still be in high school at the moment? Yes. Uh, yes. He was an uh, early enrollee, so yes, he could yeah. be still in high school. And then the third quarterback is Legend Brumbaugh, right. whose uh, dad is the defensive line coach. Right. So the quarterback side, you're not going to see a lot on Saturday, but seeing Piggy and Kasim throw the ball? It looks oh. like they're well on their way because they're in uniform now. Uh, like you said, they're doing some, I don't know what you would call it, rehab exercises. Yeah. Like you said, lunges. But they're also taking snaps so to speak from like a coach uh, and they're dropping back uh, and they're moving around a little bit I don't know how much cutting they're doing uh, I don't know if they can cut at this point or if they're allowed to cut uh, but it certainly looks like they're well on their way and based on what we've seen I would expect them in August to be ready to go uh, and compete for the job uh, now as far as the spring game on Saturday I am looking forward to seeing Tyler Dessou uh, it would, like we said is an early enrollee uh, and he's listed he was listed on the recruiting sites as a dual threat quarterback mm -hmm. Uh, and you would know a little more about the and the best in Virginia, right? You would know a little bit more about the Sioux than me, having seen him practice last week. I wasn't here at practice. How do you look in that scrimmage? I think he looks quick. He throws a good ball. He looks a little bit football-wise older than being a what I assume to be 18-year-old kid who should be getting ready for his senior prom instead of out here playing right. with college kids so so far I'm impressed and if he's all that we had I would feel pretty good that the kid's going to develop into a pretty decent quarterback and he's bigger than most dual most guys that you think of as dual threat guys uh, he's a little bigger than that. He's, he's pretty thick in a good way 
Right. Uh, you're really impressed with Rayshad Lewis. You did a story on Press Box. Or you're going to. What, what's the status of that story, and what did you learn about Mr. Yeah, Lewis? Yeah, I did a story on Rayshad Lewis uh, a few weeks ago for our online, uh, and he's actually playing some defensive back uh, now, uh, and so he's helping out there. Like we were talking about before, they really only have two sure returners who have played in the past in Tino Ellis. Right. We're talking uh, about cornerbacks right, here. Right, right. And Tino Ellis and uh, and the other one was Rayvon, Rayvon Davis. Davis. Uh, and so uh, and and both of them had their struggles last year. Uh, Tino uh, I, yeah, I remember him calling last year. He actually got bench. That's league. happened. Yes. Uh, and then Rayvon Davis took his spot and Rayvon right. Davis actually ended up playing for the Tino right. towards the end of the year. Right. Uh, Florida State transfer, played at Florida State uh, in 2015 and 2016, set out in 2017. Uh, I think he's going to end up starting at uh, outside cornerback uh, this year. So I think you'll have Marcus Lewis at one outside cornerback position, and I think you'll have either Tino or Rayvon at the other outside uh, cornerback position. And then, like you were saying before, you would have Antoine Brooks on the inside. You're going to have Antoine Brooks. I see Quantrez Knight. I right. see some different guys running around at safety. That's another That's another return. Yeah. But you also are going to go up against an Indiana or maybe a Minnesota, and you're going to need four cornerbacks. Right. Uh, I'm not sure Minnesota is uh, one of our early games. I think it's our first Big Ten game. The other crossover game that I'm really interested in is Illinois, and we're at Iowa. So two right. of those crossover games are here. Give us a bit of a chance to get going. You start the season with Texas over at FedEx Field. you got Bowling Green. Right now I can't remember the third game, but the fourth game is Minnesota, and you're running the Big Ten schedule. With Minnesota and Illinois, you see – think we're actually going to pull off a couple of these wins that actually, to me, adds to the win total. Well, for Maryland, I think they just need to get through the spring game healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think they can worry yeah, about this Yeah, but I have dream um, of football all year. Yeah, uh, so. so do most of us, yeah. uh, me included. Um, but yeah, I, it seems like health-wise they're doing okay in spring. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always good uh, when you get through spring and they're not multiple ACL tears. I think there was one ACL tears. The, we we uh, lost a wide receiver. Who did, who Taj Capehart right. tore right. up his so, knee. And then we have some offensive line difficulties. Right. We have... Uh, but nothing that should be like season ending. Nothing season problem, ending. Right. I think everybody, Terrence Davis has a shoulder, right. elbow, pec problem. And then both their tackles, Prince and, and Davis have some issues. Now, right. And Davis Gray. And then Gray. Right, right. Gray. But Gray looks to be in good shape. Prince tweaked his knee. He's had two other surgeries this offseason, so it's hard to say when he's going to come back, which is right. why Marcus Minder becomes more important. And, and who we saw working out uh, in offensive line drills uh, a few minutes ago, as a matter of fact, right. and he looked real good. He does. I'm, I'm impressed with Johnny Jordan at center or guard. Uh, more. I thought it's sneaky. He was sneakily one of their best recruits last year was Johnny Jordan mm -hmm. because and he ended up stepping in for them in some games and looked fine. Uh, I think you're going to see him get a lot of uh, playing time this year. I don't know what line, alignment they'll have on the offensive line. One alignment I could see them having is moving uh, Brendan Moore over to guard and right. then moving Johnny Jordan at center, I, using Johnny Jordan at center. I, I would think that would be a, a possible upgrade from where they were last year. One position we haven't talked about is running back where Maryland seems loaded. Mm -hmm. When you have a Ty Johnson, you have McFarland coming in, you have uh, right. Lolo Harrison, yeah. uh, you have Tavon Fleet Davis, mm -hmm. you have Javon Leak. Who looked good at times last oh year when he got a goodness. chance to get in there really fast. I don't know how you get everybody on the field. There's only one football. I like what Matt Canada is doing with a lot of the inside sweeps. Right. The what you call shuffle passes. Right. Jet sweep. They, they've got every trick in the book, and you've seen a little bit of that at practice. They don't let us watch the whole practice because I'm sure there's some secrets in there. What do you make of having five top-end tailbacks? Well, I think it's good because, number one, just health – for health reasons, you like to have as many running backs as possible because that is one position, like most positions in football, where guys tend to go down like flies. Uh, last year, they actually had some good luck with health, knock on wood. Hopefully, for their sake, that happens again. Yeah. Um, but with Matt Canada's system, it, there should be more opportunities for running backs to do more than just carry the ball. I think last year, 
they their running backs only caught I think it was 17 passes it's and a, between low low and it's a tie, few more than the tight ends right <laughs> only a few more than <laughs> right, tight ends right. and between low low and tie I think they only caught 16 Mm-hmm. And those are two guys that, when you get them in space, they're really good. You've got to get them more involved in the passing game. I mean, those are guys that should be catching, I would think, 30 balls a piece a year. And in Matt Canada's system, uh, they'll have a chance to do that, where they can catch three, four, five passes a game. Um, now, with lo- and like I said, uh, and, and with Matt Canada's system, there should be more opportunities to have more running backs on the field at once. There so two be. running backs, three running backs on the field at once. Uh, and last year we didn't really see that. I think I, maybe it may have been you that was clamoring for Walt Bell to use Lolo and Ty Johnson at the same time. I think that only happened once when a quarterback was hurt right. and they just needed to get they, a couple backs in there. Right. So, yeah, I think it would stretch the defense, but a lot of pressure on linebackers and safeties have to cover those guys in space. You cannot leave them alone. And I think that's where Matt Canada's system is going to excel, is putting defenses at a bit of a disadvantage, not knowing where the ball is going to be. And maybe throw it to a tight end. Maybe. 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 Everyone, and that'll be one of the big features of the spring game. I'll tell game. you what, at FedEx Field, the first game mm-hmm. uh, of the season, once a Maryland tight end catches a pass, the Maryland media is going to go crazy. And the Texas media is there, they're not going to know why. Right. And they're going to have to tell them that they haven't caught a pass right. in like a year and a half. Right. And they're going to what? Since the Are Obama kidding? presidency. <laughs> yeah. uh, they've never caught a pass with this president. Well, this has been Wayne Viner along with Luke Jackson with our Maryland Spring Football Preview Post View live from practice. And I guess final, you'll hear from us on Saturday again. You will hear Bruce. again with Bruce Posner, with Mason, the intern, and a, a cast of thousands out here. Luke, thanks for being on. We'll go back and Absolutely. watch a little more practice and uh, wait for the players afterwards. Thanks a lot.